ransom. But Charles Robinson of Yahoo writing, hold on a second. There's no longer a presumption that Lawrence is a lock to sign a deal making him what? the highest paid player well, in the NFL. Particularly after his injuries and struggles last season, it's worth noting that Lawrence has a league worst wow. 60 turnovers over the past three seasons. Now, a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, I play a little dirty pool with Trevor Lawrence statistics mm -hmm. because I add in his miserable rookie year. So I asked Josh to take out yeah. his rookie year, and this was his ranks, as Shador Sanders would say, very mid. <laughs> okay, so th I would like to, you, maybe not playing dirty pool with the statistics, but I would like to, I'm not saying you're playing dirty pool, for the audience to understand what that, the context of that quote from Charles Robinson, the article was. Mm -hmm. He was not saying, when he says no longer a lock, he wasn't talking about him getting a contract. He was talking about being the, the highest paid. Being the highest paid. Yes. And that there is now speculation that he could come in around the Jalen Hurts number rather than surpassing the Joe yes. Burrow number. Which, by the way, I think would be totally reasonable. I think any of those things are on the board. But if the Jags said, you know what, we'll pay you what Justin Herbert got, but we're not going to pay you the Joe Burrow number, I think that's totally fair. You yeah. know what I mean? I think if I'm, if I'm Trevor's people and they try to pay, I think I would peg it to Justin Herbert. Be like, make the argument why he should get more than me. It's going to be hard. And so you, I think that. You, I don't think you've been unfair to Trevor, but I do think that this is the accurate. Okay, so let's talk about this. You know, is it a mistake to extend the Prince, Trevor Lawrence, this offseason? I think there's a lot of confusion about who Trevor Lawrence is. Um, he's had some bad luck, both from an injury perspective, being drafted to the Jaguars perspective, having a terrible first-year coach as a rookie, and that's his introduction to the NFL. It's been disastrous. And then Doug Peterson had to come in there and make some moves and some changes. And listen, I think Doug Peterson is a really good coach. I don't know if he's a great coach, okay? I think he's a player's coach. I think players love him. I think he's a good guy. I think he's one of those coaches that you feel comfortable around, that you can talk to. The guy's got a wealth of wisdom, right? He's been around. He's won a Super Bowl. He's learned from Andy, you know, Brett Favre. Like, so the, the guy's great. You, If you have him as your head coach, you should be happy. But I think he is more... Mike McCarthy than Andy Reid, than Sean McVay, Shanahan, okay? And one of the best examples that I can use for this is that he won the Super Bowl, which was great and unbelievable, but a lot of people in Philly think it was because of the offense, in terms of the offense side, that it was less um, Doug Peterson and more Frank Wright. Not to mention, also, the big famous trick play, the Philly special, Nick Foles called it. Nick Foles came right up during that timeout and said, Philly special? And Doug Peterson said, uh, okay. And that's what he did. And he, again, he still had to give the okay. So kudos to him, but it was Nick Foles' idea. It was clearly not on his radar, Doug Peterson's radar, to do that. So arguably the greatest play in the history of the NFL, you know, of the NFL Super Bowl, was called by Nick Foles, the backup quarterback. And again, kudos to Doug Peterson for saying, yep, you have my blessing. Go do it. So I just think that, you know, that's a little hard. Um, and then you have some injuries on some of his weapons with Trevor Lawrence, as well as now this past season, he got injured and he continued to play because he is a big, strong, physical dude. Okay. And he's just been banged up though. And so that now will also bring down his numbers because he still continued to, to rough it out, you know, to play. Uh, similar to what happened with Baker Mayfield when he tore his labrum, you know, that definitely hurted his number, you know, hurt his numbers and made him probably not probably made him look worse than he actually was indeed. And that was probably the worst thing that he could have done. And, you know, ultimately that was probably why the Cleveland was like, nah, you're not good. We move on from you. So I just think that Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback. Is he good enough to overcome all this other stuff? I think his style of a play is no. And that's why, because Josh Allen can really run and rip off runs and do certain things and really has a cannon and is a beast, I think that highlights how amazing Josh Allen is because he's been able to, to thrive, and I don't want to say thrive, but have success relative to not having a good offensive coach, having multiple offensive coordinators, having, you know, 
weapons go in and out, you know, d- cluster injuries on the defense that, you know, he's been able to overcome these things that Trevor Lawrence has not proven to be able to do. I think if you put Trevor Lawrence on on within with the 49ers or the Rams or the Texans or the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Packers, like he's going to be good. He's going to have success. He's going to be a great quarterback. Trevor Lawrence isn't suddenly not a bad quarterback, and I don't think he's a bust. But does he have the ability to truly take over a game? And maybe he does, and he's just had the bad luck with having just no weapons and injuries. Because listen, we even saw um, Carson Wentz. I forget what year it was. It was after the Super Bowl, after they won the Super Bowl. It was either the first year or second year after that. He had no one to throw to. There was an insane amount of injuries throwing to guys who were on the practice squad at the practice squad at the practice squad. And yet he had like a record of like most yards thrown to like the most amount to the most number of receivers. Like he was doing everything he could. And that's why I think Carson Wentz is actually a good quarterback. You know, and I think some people are trying to say like essentially um, Trevor Lawrence is essentially like a Carson Wentz drafted high, a big, strong dude has a great arm, but just can't seem to put together, you know, anything truly successful over the long term. Outside of Carson Wentz did have an MVP level season until he got injured, which, you know, he probably still should have won the MVP despite his injury. So I think Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback. I do not think Trevor Lawrence is a bust. I really, really don't. I think um, he's had some unlucky, you know, unlucky circumstances. That rookie year was a disaster. There was no fault of his own. Um, Doug Peterson is a good coach. He can do some good things, but, you know, let's not act like, um, the Jaguars are stacked and we know young quarterbacks need some help. Okay. They need weapons. They need receivers. Patrick Mahomes started his career with Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and Andy Reid. That is a massive benefit. No ifs, hands, or buts. There's just no debating it. Okay. The moment they took away his offensive line, he puts up nine points in the Super Bowl and gets rocked. These things matter. And I think on top of Trevor Lawrence having the bad, unfortunate luck of being in, like he literally had four different injuries last season, like back to back to back to back. So of course he played bad. You know, the one game he like couldn't even walk. And yet they didn't even bring a card out for him. They made him like walk as he could like barely. Then the next game he was out there because the guy is a beast. You know, physically he is a beast. So I think Trevor Lawrence will be good. If people are so, there's so many people that are convinced that Russell Wilson can still ball and that Justin Fields is actually legit and it was all the Chicago Bears fault. Well, if you believe that, then you better believe that Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback, okay? You better believe that. You can't believe that Justin Fields is about to be unleashed and Trevor Lawrence is, you know, just a bust because that's just, come on, that's just not accurate. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you think about Trevor Lawrence? Do you think he's a for real quarterback or do you think they're just kind of hanging on to a couple high moments in the NFL and really more his just college career? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.